Welcome back guys, in this video I will be doing a harmonic balancer swap on this C6 Corvette. So for anything from a 2005-2013, it's the exact same procedure. Now these cars have an issue, there's a technical service bulletin issued by GM on this. Uh, usually the, what happens is the bolt backs out on the harmonic balancer. But in this case, this one um, is wobbling. Some other symptoms that you would hear is, uh, is also a uh, chirp you would hear. But this one doesn't have a chirp, but the balance is wobbling, so let me show you. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start it. See the harmonic balance is down there. You can see it's a little bit of a wobble there. Now sometimes you'll see the elastomer, the rubber ring around it, it gets squeezed out and the inside part of the damper and the outer ring um, move apart. So that's pretty much what happened here a little bit. Can't really see on camera but that's the reason why we're changing it out. So let's begin. Alright, I just want to mention this is Dirty Dog Mechanics uh, car, so follow him on his YouTube channel. And these are 10 millimeter. Uh, nuts here on the battery, so take those off. And now take the belt off, the accessory belt. That's a 15 millimeter, you just put it right there and turn it over. It just comes right off. Make sure if you don't know how this goes on, um, take a picture or write it down, or you can Google it see how it goes back on. Alright now the column, the steering column, the shaft over there, that collar, that's an 11 millimeter, 11 millimeter bolt and we're going to get this from on top also. Um, you might want to either lock the steering wheel or hold the wheel because this shaft is going to turn. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. Alright so it's pretty much out. Go in there, use your hand, and that's the bolt. All right, now the slip collar, you put a pry bar right behind it, and you wiggle that baby out. Just like that. All right, so just grab this and push it up a little bit out of the way. Just keep it there. Take both front wheels off. These are 19 millimeter light bulbs. Tie rods, it's 11 16 right there. Take that off. Alright, so the ball joint in here is spinning with the nut, the stud over there. So I'm just gonna put a jack under here and put some pressure on it like that. Just enough to get it for us to take the nut off. Let's see if that works. Yep, look like a charm, baby. All right, now you can take a hammer to this, whack it here, or put the nut back on and whack it on top a little bit, see if this uh, tie rod pops out. Um, I like to use this, this is an OTC. Tie rod end removal tool. So I took the cup off and there's a little ball there, and that's perfect because it's recessed here, like into a little cup. And put that on, tighten that down, and it should pop it out. And as you can see, I barely turned this, and this oh. thing popped out. And same procedure on the driver's side. And what I like to do is I like to put the nuts back on where they came from so we don't lose them. Okay, now we're going to take the sway bar off the sway bar brackets and just swing it down. These are 13 millimeter bolts here. And now the passenger side. And just grab the bar and it swings down by itself. All right, now this is uh, the bracket for the ABS assembly here. And it's a 13 millimeter here. Get those off, two bolts. Oh, keep the track of any 
leave that loose. All right, so these uh, brackets here hold the power steering cooling lines, the 10 millimeter bolts, take those off. And the other side. I'm putting an 18 millimeter flared crow, crow foot on here. And I'm gonna get this top line on the rack. So I'm gonna put that on there. Then I'm gonna put my ratchet on there. Crack it off. Got it, baby. And that's off. You can also use a flared line wrench here. Get the top one, that's also an 18. And that cracked loose. Yeah, baby. So once it cracks loose, you could just use a regular open end because you're not going to strip it at this point and thread it out the rest of the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right. So this line is out. Uh, make sure you put a pan underneath to catch the, the parsing fluid. Also, if you have a hard time going in there, you could also drop the crate a little bit to get in there. So those lines are out on top. Okay, now this is on the line over here of the rack. So pull this clip out and pull this out. Unclip that. And there's another little bracket here. Plastic clip. Take that out. We're just making sure there's nothing on the rack. Alright, All right, so over here to stop you from leaking, you could buy one of these. I'll put the link in the description below. Or you can put a little Ziploc baggie with rubber bands and just keep it out of the way. All right, now to get the rack off the cradle, that's an 18 millimeter nut over there, and I put a wrench on it. And then the other side, we're gonna use a socket, a deep socket, uh, to get the other side off. Now the, the driver's side bolt for the rack, you just put a wrench right here, hold that, and inside we have a deep socket and uh, take that off as well. There you go. And just pop the bolt out like that. Just like that. All right, now the rack is loose. Uh, there's different ways of doing this. Some people take this rack and slide it out the driver's side, but it's brake lines in the way. Um, some other people just slide it out a little bit off the passenger side. Uh, we're gonna see what we can get away with over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cradle bolts, there's four of them. We're gonna, take, uh, we're gonna loosen up all four and drop it down maybe half inch to an inch and see which way is the best way to take this out. We're probably going to try taking out the, the, the passenger side first. So, this is 11 sixteenths. And the driver's side, you got to push the sway bar up a little bit to get a little more access to that. Also, over here, I put a jack underneath the cradle just in case. Now this is the last bolt. All right, now the driver's side, there's a bracket for this uh, brake line over here. So I'll go ahead and take that off. All right, so this acorn clip over here, it was in here. So we use a little handle and pushed it up. There's another acorn clip over here. Just pop that out. All right, now we're gonna try taking this out to the driver's side. Um, I don't think it's possible to take it out the passenger side. It probably is possible, but it's a little more difficult, it seems like. 
So we're just going to take it out, the job aside, slide it out, push this bracket up for ABS. This brake line over here, this is the only one that's in the way. So you just got to grab it, try to bend it over. It's like a dual my camera, girl. Oh, yeah. That's right. Been a while, Clam. That's right. And you could grab it from the middle of the cradle, that line, and push it towards the driver's side. That also give you some more clearance to bend it. Just like that. All right, now over here on the driver's side, we're going to bang in and wedge this down with a pry bar. And if we need extra clearance, we'll always have somebody just push down on this. Brake line is cleared. With our last one. And we just got this last brake line here to clear. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there you go. It's hitting the crane too. Try now. It's still hitting the crane. Alright, so we got want to get a little more room over here from the cradle. Alright, so I moved it down some more, and there you go. That's all we needed. Need that extra space over there. Disconnect this too here, the speed sensor, just so it doesn't get cracked. All right, and broken. All right. And wait, hold on. There we go. Woo! She's out. All right. So this power steering line over here, this high pressure line. Uh, you can just grab it and move it by hand and bend it over. Uh, we have to replace it so because it's leaking. So how to replace that is you put a crow foot underneath. I'll show you with a long extension, a 16 millimeter crow foot. And crack that loose and take that out. Now to normally do this job, you're supposed to take the alternator off. But we could get it from down here with, what like I said before, a 16 millimeter uh, crow foot and a long extension. So go ahead and crack that loose. Go. And it's off. Alright, so this all comes right out. Now a tensioner bolt for the AC compressor belt. That's a 15 millimeter. And make sure you get new belts because when you do this job. You don't want to just do this huge job without changing the belts. Might as well change them. All right, so the next thing I would check here is you can take the water pump pulley, see if it wobbles or makes any noise. This is good. Then the tensioner pulleys, like this one here, turn it. There's no noise, no wobble or anything. They're tight. All the pulleys are tight. So you have to change anything. Also check the tensioner pulley on top. All right, now in order to 
take the harmonic bouncer crank bolt off. We have a little tool that holds the flywheel in place. So there's two 13 millimeter long bolts here that hold the starter. And over here there's a clip and there's a 13 millimeter nut on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the 13 millimeter nut off. All right, so it's a 13 millimeter deep socket in there. Let's take that nut off the top. Right there. And just pull that the wires off it. There's a big one and a small one. Now to take this clip off, you push the top up and then pull that out. And here it is, I took it off. Don't forget there's a rubber seal in there. Put that back on. This actually fell out. Okay, now there's 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter bolts here. There's two of them. And hold the starter because it might fall on your face. All right, so we forgot one thing here. That's a 10 millimeter bolt here. Hold this plastic in place as shield. You gotta take that off before you take the starter off. And the whole thing should come right out. There you go. Okay, now to hold the flywheel in place, this is what it looks like. And it comes with two bolts. And this is about 20 bucks on eBay. You pick up one of these. Go ahead and put this in now. Okay. And now if the flywheel's not what's supposed to be, you can put a little pry bar here and move it. So this I think is pretty good where it's at. Go ahead and put the bolts in. Alright, there's some space up here now. It fell down a little bit. So I can just go ahead and turn the flywheel up to there. And now tighten those down. And you're good. Now you gotta lay down the pipe. And that's 24 millimeter bolt over there, the breaker bar. Go ahead and crack that loose. Yeah, baby. Snap. Woo! Snap. And she's loose. And she's out. This is the harmonic balance of puller. And it's uh, Aries part number 71002. And it comes with this. And different size pushing push rods. Uh, you could probably also get this from AutoZone for free, rental tool program. Grab your rod, put it in the hole. And these these uh, legs over here, this puller, go on this inside ring. So you put that over there. Just like that. Now tighten that down. And make sure it sits square. And you can tighten that down, it'll pull it out. And that's a three quarter inch at the end over there. I'm using a box, a ratcheting box end. And she's sliding out, boys and girls. Uh, it won't be a bad idea to put some lube over here, or uh, WD-40, whatever your favorite personal lubricant is. Hey, Mr. Clown. Sorry, Brianna. There she is.
Just grab her and take her out. All right, so this is the bouncer we took off. As you can see here, this rubber ring, the elastomer is actually pushed up and out. And over here, it's in inward. So which creates the outer ring to wobble a little bit. It's a little cockeyed, so it's wobbling as it's uh, turning. So that's why we're replacing this. Okay, now I'm gonna use a seal puller. I would also recommend changing this uh, timing cover seal as you do this job. So you go to do this with a flathead. You should put the seal puller behind it. And pop it out. Just like that. Okay, so I put some brake cleaner on this towel over here. And I'm just gonna clean the surface area of where the seal sits. Also, you can also clean the crack snout. And should be good. So this is the new oil seal we're putting in from GM, part number 1258575673. We'll put this in. Put it in dry. Make sure it's in square when you put first put it in. Now lightly tap it with the hammer. I just so happen to have this around, so it fits it perfectly. I'm go ahead and tap that. And it's going in. I'm gonna work my way around and tap that in. All right, so that's done. Make sure the face of the seal is flat with the timing cover over here, so that's good. So this is the bouncer that we're putting in. It's from Summit. This is what it looks like. This has a keyway on it, and this this uh, crank snout doesn't have a pin for this. They do sell pin kits if you want to put a supercharger on, so this doesn't spin on the crank snout. So what we can do here is we're just gonna put some black RTV in here so it doesn't leak out. And there's also a metal washer with a rubber seal on it. That also goes at the end over here. It uh, doesn't go perfectly on it, but it's very slightly bigger over here, the bouncer. So we're just gonna push it on there and put it onto the car. So right now we're just gonna put some RTV in this, in this keyway groove. All right, so we're gonna use some ultra black in here in the keyway groove, just to cover that up. All right, now this rubber friction washer Put it in the back, just like that. And go ahead and put this on. So this is the installer we're gonna use, is Summit part number 900333. That's what it looks like. Uh, if you don't have this, they recommend you heat up over here, this whole area, because it's uh, pressed and fit, and put it in that way. But I'll recommend doing it this way. All right, so let's put this in. All right, now put the installer on. Make sure you grab a lot of threads. I would just bomb that out because you don't want to pull any threads out of the crank snout. So that's good. And now tighten that down. There's a little bearing over here, like a Torrington style bearing. That'll help you while you install this. Alright, so that's as much as I could do it. I put a 15 16 socket on there. Now I'm gonna take the tool off and put a bolt on, the ARP, ARP bolt, and torque that down. So this is the bolt we're putting in, it's an ARP bolt, and that's the part number. And that's what it looks like. And you need a 12 point inch and an inch sixteenth 
socket to put in there. It comes with lube. So you gotta lube the threads, you gotta lube on this side over here, and the other side of the head. You can also put a little bit on the face of the harmonic balancer. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, now the GM stock bolt is a torque to yield, so you can't reuse that once you, once you stretch it out. Um, this one here is just straight 235 or 240 foot pounds of torque, and you're done. So we're gonna go ahead and loop what we need to loop here. And put this bad boy on. Loop it up, baby, loop it up. Oh, yeah. And put a little bit over there, too, where the wash is going to sit. Now put the bolt in. We'll go ahead and crank that baby down. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this to 240 foot-pounds. There you go. All right. I don't know if you hit it though. Done. Right, 235? All right, one more. Yeah. All right. We're good. All right, so we're going to put the AC belt on. Put the pulleys, put everything else in and leave the tensioner out. That's a smooth one, you just put it, you just slide it on. Is it on? It's gone, it's gone. There you go. And she's out. Okay, we took the flywheel holder out. We can put the starter back in because uh, we don't need to hold the engine anymore. So everything's pretty much reversal of wow. removal. Yeah. Okay, so everything on top is good. Starter's bolted down. Now the last thing is over here. And everything is good over here. So this is the new power steering hose we're putting in. And that's what it looks like. Go ahead and catch that on top. All right, so what we did off camera was I put my hand through here and I tightened the nut while some, my friend was under here holding this in place where it's supposed to be. So that's how you catch that. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and tighten that down with the crow foot again. And we're good. All right, we're putting it back in. So let's do this. Wait, was the power steering line above. on top of the rack? Yeah, above the rack. Okay. Yep, power steering line is always above the rack. Oh baby. I'm holding it up for you. <laughs> Got to finagle it in there. Alright, so this is actually falling in where the mount's supposed to be. Just push it down a little bit. Yeah. It needs a lot of finagling to put this in. Come back, come back. Okay, we finagled the rack in. Now I gotta move this up and down. And the bolt is in the mount. Okay, now we're torquing down the cradle bolts to 81 foot pounds. That's good. We we'll do all four. All right, so we're pretty much done. We put the brake lines in place. We tightened down all the power steering lines. Uh, now we're tightening down the rack, the two bolts. We tightened down the tie rods. Everything's pretty much reversal removal. We're gonna put the sway bar mounts back on. We put the bracket on for the ABS. Put the tires on, we're going to make sure the tires are straight and line it up with the steering shaft. 
the steering shaft bolt in and the power steering lines. Oh, uh, sorry, the power steering fluid we're gonna fill up. That's pretty much it. This is a pretty decent sized job. I think it's cold. It's seven hours it's cold for. So it took us about a day. We were BSing for a while, so be prepared. So again, check out Dirty Dog Mechanic. This is his car. We just happened to do it in Clown's Garage today. And thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like me, and share me. Follow me on Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. See ya!